is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. And today, the sixth day of Black History Month, is the question, have Black Americans become arrogant? Judging how things are going with Black Americans in the so-called African diaspora, I think that some people think that Black Americans have become arrogant. See, it used to be that Black Americans were very humble. We were brought up to be humble by our parents and their parents and their parents and their parents before them. Being brought up in a white dominated society, we had to behave a certain way. Our parents taught us that from way back then. And so we sort of extended that into dealing with other black people who came here as immigrants. So what happened, what I saw happening, what I have seen in my lifetime, people coming from other parts of the world, whether they're black or not, coming to the United States and somehow assuming a sense of superiority over black Americans. They don't dare try that with white people but they'll try it with black people. And for the longest time, black people complained. Oh, they think they're better than we are. They think they're better than we are. All the time, these people are grifting off of our culture and taking advantage of the agency that we have earned in this country. So there came a day when the humble little mouse turned into a rat and then he turned into a super rat, and now maybe a monster. I think that's what's starting to happen with black Americans. Our children, this new generation of black Americans, have a very strong sense of who they are. And black Americans are saying, wait a minute, hold up, just a minute. Where did you come from and where do you get off? telling me who I am and telling me who you are in America, the country that was built on the back of our ancestors. So this is where this started. Black Americans, a new generation, came into play and they started looking people in the eye and calling them things like tethers. I had to go to the Urban Dictionary to find the meaning of tether as it is being used blood these younger black Americans. It says it's a term used by members of the black American ethnic group, I'm not using Negro, to describe African or Caribbean immigrants who moved to America for economic opportunity using the benefits of the black American civil rights struggle while simultaneously disparaging the history, legacy, and lineage of the black American movement. So that's about right. That's about right. I've come to the conclusion that black people in other parts of the world have no idea of the magnitude of influence and input that our family members, our ancestors had in this country. They're assuming that our input has been about the same as theirs in their countries. And that's how come they're running. We're not running. Most of us are not really going anywhere. Some black people go running over there to Africa and then they come running back. But they don't realize we weren't just slaves. They were builders. They were agriculturalists. They were inventors. They were creators. We built institutions and communities colleges and churches and just a whole infrastructure that would have been fine if people had left us alone. They didn't do that in their homeland. And that's how come they don't think we did anything. We are way more than just enslaved. We were very productive even in slavery. Just the music that comes out of this enslaved system is astounding.
They have done whole operas around that music. So they don't understand that we're not like them. We were just humble and didn't brag about what we had done. But when they started running their mouths and they got it back, then they started thinking, oh, now black people are arrogant or somebody said black people are clout chasing their own culture. Now, how stupid is that? Just because black people are standing up and saying, you don't even need to be in a conversation with me because you are a runner. You don't claim that you built in a society that you're proud of. And if they had come here and treated us with respect, they wouldn't be getting the pushback that they're getting now. When they're coming over here, they are coming over here on our dime and they are coming into our community and they are grifting off of our culture. I heard somebody say, uh, black Americans don't realize that Malcolm X was from some country, Grenada. His mama was from Grenada. So by that means, he would be a tether. Well, what they don't get again, first of all, Malcolm X's mother moved to the United States. His father is African American. He was rightly identified with his father's people. And so we don't send for anybody from Grenada, anywhere in the Caribbean, anywhere in Africa, anywhere from uh, Latin America. We don't send for any of these people. They come here, and when they are kind and friendly and know how to act like they have some good sense, we welcome them. Malcolm X was not thinking about I don't even know if he even mentioned it. I don't even know how important it was to Malcolm X that his mother was from Grenada because he was born in the United States to a black American father. And he assimilated into the black American culture. And same thing with Louis Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan acknowledges that his roots are in Jamaica, but he identifies with us. We don't send for these people. They come to us and we accept them because that's how we are. But when you start talking shit, you're going to get it back. That's kind of how it works. And again, when those Caribbeans, especially from the Caribbean, when they first started coming to the United States, they didn't come up here trying to make themselves into something important. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. They didn't do that. They mixed in with the culture and they did what they did. And the same thing is true with the Africans. When those Africans first started coming to the United States, they were coming here on scholarships, but they also had sponsorships. White people had to sponsor them, but they were very nice, very sweet, especially the ones from Ghana, because I was living in New York City at the time, and there were some Ghanaian professors working at Pace University, and there were some People in the school that I worked, black women, single moms, who had gotten off on the wrong track, and they were trying to, they had some kind of a neighborhood empowerment program where they had the opportunity to go back down to school, and it was in Pace University, and those African professors were trying to help them. They loved those professors, and they, they were very nice people. And I do believe that the system interfered with that and started telling those Africans not to associate with black Americans. I think there was interference because those first Africans from Kenya, Nigeria, and Ghana, I know for sure, they were very nice. But back to Malcolm X because I want to make this point. Malcolm X is an icon in black America. Black America love and revere Malcolm X. But black America would have survived without Malcolm X. And I don't mean to be mean, but Malcolm X was big in New York. He wasn't necessarily big in the southern, and I don't know about the midwestern part of the country. He became much better known after his death than he was before his death. Now, people who are involved in activism know about everybody. But everybody wasn't tuned in to Malcolm X. And his assassination seemed so senseless. And the way it was done and where it was done was just horrendous 
to black America. But Malcolm X was better known in the Northeast and especially in large cities where they had a lot of black activism. Dr. Martin Luther King was the icon in this part of the world. And Dr. Martin Luther King actually got legislation passed, including the Civil Rights Bill, the Voting Rights Act, and influenced the Immigration Act of 1965. So Dr. Martin Luther King was revered in this part of the country, probably more so than Malcolm X. But we love Malcolm X. He's a part of our family as much as anybody else's family. If, he, if, if you wanted to claim him for being a Caribbean, he should have done that work in the Caribbean. He didn't do the work in the Caribbean. The work was done here. His name was made here in the United States of America with black Americans. So it might be the case that people might look at black Americans and say, oh, they're arrogant. Well, the arrogance comes from somewhere. We have people who come in and say, I'm not black. I'm Somali. I'm not black. I'm whatever the other one is. Oh, Dominican. And black Americans are saying, well, actually, you're looked upon as black. And then they want to make a big case out of it. We're not trying to claim you as a part of our lineage. We're just trying to give you a heads up about how you're looked upon in America. And they get mad. But I have come to realize that the only thing those people have that they feel good about is their proximity to whiteness. The fact that they might be a lighter complexion than some black Americans, a different texture of hair than some black Americans, and different features than some black Americans, because there's no one phenotype for black Americans. There are many. But the reason they make a big deal over how they look, claiming it's about culture, but it's really about how they look, is because they haven't accomplished anything. They don't have anywhere near the body of work that we have. So the only thing they can engage a black American with is something that they call culture. And then when you look into the culture, like what are you talking about? You're only talking about food and clothes and lifestyle, and everybody has that. So they're trying to make something big out of how they look that they're calling culture. And so at the end of the day, it's a waste of time talking to them because they really cannot spar with a black American based on accomplishment. You don't know who we are. You don't know what we've done here. And we're not like you. The first thing is you ran from black countries. We live in a white dominated society and we have still made a greater impact in this society than they made in the society they came from. And they came from predominantly black societies. Black Americans started out being humble, being welcoming to other people. We're all black. Let's be brothers. Let's be sisters. Let's work together. And then they come here. Well, we didn't come over here to fight white supremacy with y'all. Well, <laughs> so that's what we get. And then we're saying, well, that's how come you can't live in your own homeland. And that's why you're over here. Because you don't want to stand up and fight for anything. We've had to stand up and fight. So, have black Americans become arrogant? No, I don't think so. I think black Americans are operating now where everybody else has been all the time. So if that's arrogant, so be it. Okay, y'all. Thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about the video. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.